Jade Price, and the title I'm giving him is the SNC Manufacturer and Fabricator on your doorstep. I know that's Andrew's one. But uh, over to you, right? Uh, thanks for inviting me and Ms. my colleague Adam here to do this little presentation. Uh, we work out of bed with us, uh, myself and Adam work closer together. Uh, just give you a little bit of a background to myself. So my name is Anthony Moyle. Uh, I've worked in the industry for 23 years. Uh, started out plate laying and then moved quickly into manufacturing where they've been ever since. Um, Adam is our production manager. He's only recently started with us, so it's February, March. So. so we work closely together along with Dave Border, who's our estimator from the manufacturing. Dave couldn't be here tonight, but he's been in the industry since uh, dinosaurs, I think he's that old. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so I started with Hopper with a Patalbet. Uh, they kindly put me on a, a mechanical engineering course to do my sitting girls, which I've, I've learned and passed. Uh, my responsibilities now, uh, I do site surveys, design work, uh, scoping out of uh, any works to be done, and quality assurance in the manufacturing room, like I said, that works out at and from. Um, so who we are is, as you can see there, it was started by Ken Price, in 1984, worked in the, as a lot of the industries here, working with the steel and coal industries. And as they sort of dry, dried up, we had to expand into other areas. Uh, so in 2004, Ken Price started manufacturing of uh, bedwars. And as you can see there, we got about 8,000 8, square meters workable area in bedwars. Uh, you can see everything else you do on there then. Um, just trying to see what it's got there. Oh, yeah, so uh, yeah, then this was a founder. So he started it up as a haulier transporting railway materials around the country. And then we expanded in it to SNC and manufacturing. Um, that's that one. Uh, so this is a little bit of the company hierarchy. So you can see there, Ken Price, CEO, and Raven is the financial director they're the heads of the company and then it breaks off then into the areas which you could see there any questions i don't know if you know any of the names of them people there didn't realize scott was so far yes so scott uh yeah so scott's a business development manager he's he's been in the industry a long time as well so, yeah, he's uh, he's pushing the company forward. It's, it's as good as where it is now. So, uh, so where we are, uh, so we've got three businesses in South Wales. So you can see the three there. Um, first one is working out of Watchdown. It's our primary store for timbers and other small materials as well. He's also got uh, behind the Cum Works in Bertha. 25 acre site, which we use for reclaimed items from the railway industry. And then we can strip down and grade these as, as required for reuse or well, whatever. Scrap bottle or scrap. Um, we can sell right down to the, the seriously bad timbers. We sell them then to people like farmers or stuff like that to make the edging strips of garden stuff there. So, our main office is in Bedwars there, so you can see we cover this area here. And this is where our manufacturing is. And myself and Adam work over there, our main office. So if you ever contact anyone, it'll be there, which you guess too. And also our maintenance and patrolling teams, which cover the whole of the UK, we're covered over there as well. There's just a little slide at the front of our building then. Oh, it's uh, it's right down the back of the estate, hard to find. Michael Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Well, down the bottom, by the way. Yeah. If uh, if you come back out to the bottom of the estate, you've gone too far. So that's it. 
Uh, so scope of operations is what we do. So you can see there we cover quite a varied <coughs> array of work. Also added additional disciplines throughout the industry. Well, out not the industry, <laughs> our company. So uh, services we can provide, as with all other rail companies, which probably do the same as well. Probably not some of them, but most of them. And all of these as well. Uh, our installation patrolling guns are fully employed and are regularly trained and certified to complete the above tasks. We also provide a 27, 24 7 call out to cover and cater for emergencies, especially in the direct mix. Do, do you do all this in house, like in welding? Do, do you contact that with it? We, do, we, got your own we do. We got welders, but right. we're not circuit welding, so oh, we yeah. contract up to them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you do art welding and fabrication? Art welding, make welding, we can do in house, but anything which is a little bit more specific to certain areas that we can supply out. But most of, well, pretty much everything on there we do ourselves. Uh, survey and design we do. Often we're contracted to assist clients in assembly of plans and can offer advice and design on matters to eliminate risk and effect improvements. So we do this in-house. So I'll go out, do a survey. Um, or Heath is another survey and he'll bring that up back, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later on that. And then we can redo certain designs for them as well, which is this year. So this is a point survey within using the GPS equipment. Um, from this point, we can overlay the existing layout, the track. Um, you've probably all seen it before. I don't, don't know whether you have. So just thought I'd put it in there to everyone to see it. Uh, and from that, we can overlay a new design. So this one was, they wanted a DD14 instead of the 12 they had to improve this alignment here. Right. So it was a nice little job. So you do that as a sort of complete package of, of work you do to survey, manufacture the material. Yeah. 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 So we manufacture the wood. To turn up for them if they want it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much what we do. So yeah, everything we do, we can do in house as well. And from that, we can just overlay then a satellite image, and it just proves that if it's all, if it's all good, there's something wrong with the equipment. Yeah. So <laughs> so we can't use it for anything more than just to prove where it is because obviously this is a satellite image, so you can see the alignment is out. Yeah. But that's just because it was yeah. taken from that. Yeah. So I I'd be more concerned if it was on the Yeah. Because so would I. <laughs> uh, when we go then to reinstall it, if they want to get a coordinate offer and the coordinates over here. So that's all that's for just to, yeah. and it looks nice. Uh, so design we do in house as well. It's there. Uh, we manufacture all standard gauge turnouts to Nendro Gray specifications, and all our bullet turnouts of the S95R are done to the southern region, not to the ones which are floating around. So you've got a great question, which yeah. are the sort of by guns now, so everything is made to see at the SRE. Uh, so these are some designs which we have done for narrow gauge. So this is a, a one in eight equals with turnout in 50 pound rail. Um, I won't go into the heads too much of it, but this is standard section for the old calories at the time. So yeah. we use these now for variant. Places. This one is uh, one and six left and turnout curved V, just curved all the way through the back end. Uh, that's manufactured for one of the new 
European section, which is, uh, which is S30. It's quite, uh, quite a difference there. Uh, that um, so the ray light is 108, the head width is uh, 60.3 millimeters. So, yeah, not the best of the intersection, but that's what they want now. So, and this one again is a uh, one eight left on the turnout, and that's 50 pound again. It looks a bit distorted because I think it stretched, stretched the image. And then this one is. Uh, one in four, and that's S7, so it's another S, so it's uh, the head width on that's 25. So nice, nice so amazing. These are all overseas customers, yeah? Uh, no, these were for British customers. Yeah, right, using continental rail stations. Yes, hmm. I think, if I remember rightly, that's for Stignog. Right, okay. Offhand. Yeah, uh, they use it. They bought a lot of oil from South Africa, yeah. So. I remember that. Oh, that was that might have been Chorus. Oh, right. yeah. So that be that could be Romney. Romney Highland didn't you trade away? Yeah. So parts and products and components. Uh as you see there, uh, we carry abundance of new and service of materials at our various locations. Uh, typical items we carry them there, so you've all seen these before. It's one sort to us. Yes. Do you do your own press plates and things? Uh, no, we don't. We, we used to do them in an old place, but then you, you've got your forging and you've got the health and safety issues of that, so we get them in now. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, fish plates we get in as well, but we can manufacture fish plates to uh, jump from different sections. So can, yeah, so you can make the odd ones. Odd ones, yes. Yeah. Uh, we all know them parts. And we also carry them cast place plates, chairs, blocks, new and serviceable as well. So we got we got a very quite a varied stock of items. And uh, we also carry fish plates and rail sections. You can see the various rail sections there. So we have bullet, the crane sections, and then you've got all the flat bottom sections, which run from your S7 or 30, 20 pound, yeah. up to the 113 pound rail sections, and the fish plates to sit as well. Uh, timbers, we carry quite, quite a wide varied stock of timbers at our Watchstone base uh, from eight foot six up to 24 foot. Right. What timber is it? What would you get your timbers from? Yeah, timbers preserved. Preserved. We've almost stopped using timbers at all now, so apart from the replacement. Has anyone? Yeah. yeah. Composites we, we carry as well. We can get a, a, a quite a varied stock of composite sleepers. Um, how did you find composites? They're different. Yeah, we got we've been putting them in in places like the Central Wales line as patch replacements. But we've we've learned quite quickly that they're not so easy to handle because they are incredibly slippery compared to timber sleepers. And that was one of the first things um, that. Yeah, you need to make sure they're all firmly fixed together before you try and move them, and they end up everywhere. You know? But generally, I think they, they they seem to be doing well, and um, I know so um, we, we've got quite a few thousand in the track. So it, yeah. I think it's the way it's going to go. Definitely. Well, we've stopped buying softwood entirely now because of the creosote yeah. plan. So um, so we can use up stocks of timbers that we've got. Oh, I mean, we're not buying any more now. So this will be the new uh, the new replacement for softwood timbers and sleepers in plain line. We haven't used any crossing bearers yet, but there's some on, on trial. Set, the Japanese company, Sekasui. Sekasui. Yeah. Sekasui. Yeah, we're trying some bearers for them. Long bearers, as well, I think. Yeah. 
they are interested to work with. Like, uh, yeah, you say those, uh, they slip. You have to, yeah, you have to do it if you drill enough solar. I mean, you have to go really slow, yeah, as well, right? Yeah, otherwise, you know, the solar, you know, right? Like, yeah, yeah, when, we, when we've had to cut them, we, we cut them and then cut them relatively yeah. as well as timber cut. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh. It's, it's an interesting material. Yes. Uh, concrete seat beds, we carry a, a stock of concrete as well, no one's serviceable. Again, they'd be graded as to where we can use them. So, yeah. okay. And we also manufacture battle stops. So, we manufacture these ones, which is rear battle stop. And we also manufacture this is a narrow gauge one, which I believe went to Brunei. So, we we quite varied in the works we can carry out in areas as we have work in. So there, uh, we've got a dedicated manufacturing workforce. They also receive regular training and many have worked in the business for many years. We currently are by fourth generation which reflects on the loyalty of the workforce and hopefully demonstrating KGJ Price as an exceptional employer. But most of the fourth ones who work on, um, on the installation and maintenance gangs, uh, as in the manufacturing, it's, uh, it's a little bit harder to get families to be involved in long term without falling out. <laughs> So that's a difficult one, that is. Uh, we manufacture all rail items from wheel stops to complicated assemblies. So we can machine up to an E-switch on bullet and 113 or 561, and we can manufacture any crossings really that it states there. Uh, I should have had some images of the bill of machines. As Mike would say, they're, they're quite interested in the ones we've got. So we got four machines in the workshop. Uh, we got two which can do an x-axis cut of 6.2 meters, and we've got a, a CNC machine which can do up to an 8 meter cut. So that's where we cover our e, e switch here yeah. for the 7 meter head cut. I, I assume you're limited by everything you have to go out of my road, don't you? Yes, yeah, so we can't. So, yeah. Beyond the knee, though, something a bit long. Yeah, we, we can't physically get them into the building with the area we've no. got. It's, uh, it's quite complicated. Yeah. 60s is the biggest we can manage to yeah. get in. So. And that covers up an awful lot of S and Z. So. I used to daze the majority of switches. Yeah. Exactly. Then yeah, you see anything of everybody. But yeah, this uh, is interesting, especially when you get a lorry driver saying, I can't get it. As you can. <laughs> so as I stated, we've got four million machines and we've got a planned maintenance and renewal replacement program ensuring complementary production. So that pretty much means we we replace any old machines which we have done this year. So we replaced a, a 10 meter milling machine with a 10 meter CNC milling machine, which uh, the boys were not happy with because they had to do more training on CNC. So I'm really happy with that one, but it's it's better for them, it's better for the company, it's better for everyone. Uh, these are some examples of what we have manufactured in the past. So that one is uh, an EV15, similar flex turnout. And these all get proof laid, inspected and marked up at our manufacturing facility. So if we can lay this in the yard. Yeah. A nice, uh, nice, nice job that is when it's uh, when you see it all laid out. Uh, the next one is a DB15. So again, this is proof laid in the yard. Uh, we can also supply the new specification lever boxes, the rack of American switch stands, yeah. which everyone seems to be liking at the moment. Yeah, that came out with English, Welsh, and Scottish railways from the States. Yeah, so they've become quite popular here now. Yeah. Yeah, so we can supply them as well. 
for example, well, they are a little bit different with the stretcher bars, acid stretcher bar on the front there. Mm. Get used to it. It's, it's work. <laughs> this is a CV nine and a quarter. One of the more common terms through, throughout the industry at the moment. CV nine and a quarter. And we've got the last end of EV8. So we also do bullet. This is one of the more compli complicated. So this was a double slip. It looks a bit sparse with the timbers, but they only wanted the steel work because the timbers they had were good. So they just wanted us to replace the steel work. Oh, okay. So it's a nice, nice one to work on when you get complicated layouts. And then Tandem. Tandem. Okay, so either side of me, I want to say it was an 8, 7, 14. So I'm red lean. So the boys love making them at the back because they ask some. So again, proof laid in the yard. Where we mark up the side as net or grade specifications, yeah. timber numbers. We don't do the lats unless they're asked for. Yeah. Because we've, we've had boys who say, we just take the lats off and chuck them in the fence and we, we don't use them. So we, we decided just to cut, not cut costs, but if the customer wants it. Yeah, they don't want it at that point, haven't they? But yeah, they, they all get marked up as well. So all of these are marked up all the way along with a line as, as required by everybody. So we, we manufacture everything we can as much to the as ease to put it in. And then this is a little bit of a different one. Hmm. That was uh, a crossing slab for crane rail. So it was um it was 20 a skip. So it was a it's quite a complicated design how they had to do it. So um that was too many. One of my last ones, I was. So it, uh, it's a double, a double flange wheel, is it? Yeah. Double flange wheel. Um, yeah, it was a kind of weird spot. Uh, yeah, it was, it was an interesting one. Hmm. So you come in, complete. It was profiled to the outer shape, like a big bow tie. Yeah. And then we machined everything else. So these were all machined in. So it's all machined from solid, basically. Yeah. yeah. And all on a manual machine. Not nearly easy CNC programming. All manual. What material does that make for that machine? That would have been the comparable grade to the steel, the crane rail steel. Oh. So it would. We, we're actually looking at crossing some um, manufactured again by machining from solid billet now. So try and get something a bit tougher. But, uh, well, they had half bleeding every. Yes. <clears throat> yes, I think that was, it was 1800 long by about 800 wide on either end. Yeah. I think it wasn't actually too bad. It was, I want to say it was, it was under a ton because the magnet which you lifted it with was good only carry oh, a yeah. But it wasn't as heavy as, but it was crazy. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's a relatively shallow depth yeah. as well as that. Yeah. So can't remember what crane really was. I want to say a hundred a a one hundred, but I can't mm -hmm. remember off it. Uh, yeah, so I thought this would be a, a little bit interesting because not many people see these. And I've only ever done one. No, I don't know. As I said when I worked in S and C I used to enjoy these odd ball jobs for the and crossing across a train crane track or something like that. Yeah, all yeah. the weird crossings and things. That took a very weak to machine as well. <laughs> so it was uh, time wise, it was uh, a, a long process. Uh, so we also have a fleet of lorries. So we've got four lorries, oh no, six lorries, sorry, uh, all with the extendable trailers, which can carry up to 60 foot rail with crane facilities, which allows loading at our depot and offloading at customer site, and they are forward forms registered. You have that renewal policy as well for the vehicles, which 
keeps all the lorries up to date. Nice. Has that all got a crime as well? Or? Uh, this, not this one, this is a, an older lorry, but um, I want to say two of our trailers have got cranes on them. A higher top crane, too. Yeah. yeah. No, three. The three, three with the crane. Yeah. Four. So the four with the cranes. So we've got two fixed bay, two fixed lorries, and they both got cranes. And then we've got two trailers which have train cranes as well. It makes us a, a little bit unique as well that we haven't got to outsource our transport to others. We can just do it all in-house. And that that like that comes from your origins. Is it, is it that comes point? from Ben with his lorries, yeah. likes his lorries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you start an industry, you try to keep it going uh, with whatever you've got. So that's that. And now we'll go on to a little bit of research and development, which we, um, we are going into at the moment. Uh, so this, as you probably all know, is the Tangley base pit. So we've that's the original spec, which is around about 28 kilograms, and we've come up with one, which is 16 and a half kilograms. Uh, um, at, at the moment, we're in this development stage. We're looking for a federal mm -hmm. sponsor. We mm -hmm. discussed it prior to this, so just thought it'd be nice to and interesting to see where we can go with future future proof in the industry for everyone. So that's the top side. So as you can see, very little difference in the top side of the base plate, which you would expect never to change anyway. So all the all the all of these come out at the end of the side. Having tried lifting one earlier, I can vouch for the fact that it's considerably lighter. Yeah. But, uh, it does make a massive difference. It's 11 kilos lighter. So anyone wants one? Yeah, things that? like embedded carbon and that being a, a concern. It's a you know, big reduction in material, so yeah. also a benefit, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, when we've done the calculations for transport, I think for a thousand, I want to say it was the original ones, it was, I can't remember, but per pallet, it was 40 originals and we were up to 60 odd of the new ones per yeah. pallet. So it's a massive carbon footprint saving idea right throughout everything. Is. And then you get onto the manual handling as well, which we've all lifted these items. You're not getting fatigue with the thinner uh, base. <laughs> because it's uh, in the development stage, um, we are putting these in the ground for a trial to see how they react. Uh, stress testing we've done theoretical stress testing, and they're coming out that they're fine, well within acceptable parameters for the, for the material. So it's yeah. worth saying they're a better material than off yeah. there. So not just the grey cast iron, they're the yeah. solid and graphite iron, which is a rather tougher material anyway. So. Uh, it's a proven material through the industry anyway, because everyone's going over to this place. Why it's taking so long for this one to come up, I don't know. Uh, so also we got the, as I mentioned earlier, the 24 hour call and support. We've got dead teams. And news. The big red fan. Big red four. So what do you do on your call now? So, so is it derailments? Or? Derailments. Yeah. Uh, any damage. So if um, anything they find which has been damaged by a derailment will change. Yeah. So. We, we can cover all aspects of it. Yeah, so, so people like the steelworks where it's very much part of their production line to get it all running again. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, so we, because we, we carry the stock as well. Like yeah. That's another big issue where you have a derailment, it's not only a tin uh, train which has come off, but it's damaged cast chairs and everything, but we've got all the items there. Yeah. And we can just get a site. Put it in, uh, and we can also, depending on the location, be there within four hours, which is another massive help to the customer. Yeah. 
So left here, here built. Uh, so any questions? Really? And um, I just like to say thank you for giving us this opportunity. Adam said a lot there, so you need to <laughs> But yeah, thanks. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to present in front of you. And I hope you found it interesting as we are just on the doorstep as well. So it's not as though we're yeah. a million miles away from it. No, 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 I think we have done a we section has done a visit up there as well, which I think was enjoyed by those who went as well. So, but any more questions? Go to the FCC. Have you ever machined any from the HD rails? Yes. And how do they fare with standard? Or as a machine it or more of the in service part of it? Um we haven't had a lot of feedback off them. It's it's depending on where the customers require it. So um they, they've asked us to machine it, we've machined it. Um so manufacturer isn't an issue though. Manufacturer is not an issue. We've uh, we quite easily manufactured. There's very little difference in the machining time. From standard to the HP. Not that we found anything. Yeah. But we've got the old, we've got um, everything we got is carbide. It's all carbide tips, carbide tooling. There's very little high speed steel, which is the old one, which would give you these issues. The carbide can go cope with these harder steels yeah. relatively easily. So, mm -hmm. Hmm? I've got one online. Uh, yeah. Jeremy Reese asks, do the lightweight base plates cause more indentation into timbers due to the reduced surface area in contact with the timber? That's a question I've been asked. Yeah. And as I said, it's going to be going into the ground and then we can do that evaluation. We do those two tests. Tests. So yeah. we've only just received yeah. the production run. Yeah. So this is all part of our process now is we've got to get it into the ground, we've got to get it on inspect and see how the ground yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. Any other questions? So that's what I'm usually like when the questions up there. Yeah. Where's the tea? Mm. So where, what, what vials do you regularly stock? Uh, stock it weighs 113. Yeah. PS95, but we can get pretty much any other rate section which is required. Yeah. Um, we haven't done much with the Sen 16 or I want to say the American 136, which we've had an inquiry for, but we don't. Yeah, they have the 136. Yeah. 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 So, uh, really, ways we don't get that much. But I think it's much many people in this country have used it, apart from possibly the steel works again. Yeah. So, but no, we can't get anything. So, like you're saying, from the S7, the 20 pounds and 25s, they, they've gone up to 30. The main one from the BS is going to be 35 up. Yeah. But we we can get them. Um, but it's the S, the S7s, the S10s, the S14s, right up to the 49s, I think we can get them. Uh, Stuart, Stuart Corey asks, as a result of the why you've not gone into 60 kilogram rail products? 60 kilogram? You always say 60, no, I always say. Oh, I know this, probably not. I think you just said. Yeah, we just said that. So the 60 kilogram, we, we don't touch it because we don't get a lot of requests for it. All of ours is 113, 50, 61. And of course, if you go into typical one seven six two stuff you're dealing with special switch rail sections and that but you can only get from the continent as well yeah. and they are not cheap oh. yeah. Yeah. um we, we do we have done a lot in the past as well with the 88 39 i think it was, um we've done docklands like really in london yeah, and not not ninety pound. Yeah. Uh, there was an eighty. Yeah, yeah. There was an eighty because we supplied a lot of yeah. uh, breather switches, eighty pound breather switches to them. So that was that was one which is interesting. But yeah, we can pretty much manufacture anything which is required if the customer requested. All right. Any other questions? Worldwide. Yeah, no problem, Mike. Right. Well, I'd like to call upon Mike to propose a vote of thanks. Yeah. 
Anthony, thank you very much for the very informative presentation of the, the company. Why variety of work you do around the country to different companies and places you work from. And we are very modest for the first place of bed us. Yes. I'm surprised we're very small on places and I'm looking for a huge yard. It's a huge place right at the back of the estate. Yeah, well, when, sorry to interrupt you, but when, when we've gone up to like, the likes of Progress or Stalpin, the yards are massive. And you've probably been to them, you are looking for something which is probably the size of that estate. Yeah. <laughs> and we're in a little corner in the bottom somewhere. So, yeah, it, it is quite deceptive what we've done and what we can do over there. Spending many years with the network really looking for the go base space and not just cuts, you're changing in week. That's the <laughs> well, problem. Is. Yeah, so we have all the future, let's go back and give us another talk to some of the work you've done. Seeing as some of the work you've done, presentations and the things would be good. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that that could be arranged for the right price. Well, I'd like to ask the members if you'd like to show, like, I'm for you for weight, please. Right, just before we finish, then, can I say, then, um, make sure everyone's signed the, uh, the sheet, which is going now. Yeah. Okay, are there any issues arising from the minutes of the AGM? There isn't much of it. Any issues arising? No? Right, have you got the newsletter there? It's our next meeting, Mark. Monday, the events, uh, Monday, November 13th, sorry, you want to direct the emergency bed repairs? Oh, just yeah, so basically, um, uh, I'm sure a lot of you heard we had problems with New England Viaduct um, recently. We had to close the uh, Oxford line because um, the abutment started to fail. So this is the talk about the recovery works, how they managed to um, get it done and in, the, in quite a quick time in the end. Um, one could argue they probably would have been much quicker if they'd done some repairs in the first place. But, uh, oh. but that's the that, that's the next uh, that's our next presentation. I'm sure it'll be really interesting as well. So I think um, you know when you're engineering, designing under sort of pressure like that, particularly on quite an inaccessible site as well, um, is is quite interesting. Okay, so without further ado, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's good. Yes, I didn't see that. Andy, do you want to keep hold of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll keep following. <laughs> you hold stocks of some of the older or um, obscure rail sections like Wentworth and Hamlet, which we are going to get built together.